This video will cover cutting and installing vinyl wrap for the Model 3's center console. One of the first things I wanted to do when I got the car was to wrap this area. I disliked the shiny black plastic which includes the center console and the window lock button area on the doors. As you can see in the video, it is a fingerprint magnet and will get scratched. One of the first choices is to do a vinyl wrap or a paint protection film. The vinyl wrap can change the color and texture of the surface while the PPF will offer a glossy or matte finish that leaves the original color to show through. I chose to use a black brush steel vinyl by Vivid. Another good choice is 3M 1080 vinyl. I purchased a 1 foot by 5 foot roll for only $5 on eBay. Other popular choices include carbon fiber or matte black. Here are some of the samples I ordered to get a better idea how they look. The first three are 3M1080 vinyl. The first is a brushed titanium which offers a brownish metal look that complements the wood on the dash. Next is the steel which has a medium silver color and after that is the black brushed metal. Lastly, the Vivid Vinyl Black Brushed Metal has more of a matte finish than the 1080 and this is what I'm using. I also have three samples of carbon fiber vinyl. The first is the 3M 1080 Carbon Black the next is R-Wraps 3D, which is a matte finish. And lastly, R-Wraps 4D, which is a semi-gloss. Vinyl wrap is very thin, 0 0.003 to 0 0.005 inches thick, so it doesn't take much to cut it. An X-Acto knife or utility knife like this with a fresh blade will be useful for trimming. For the straight lines, I'm going to be using a rotary paper cutter, which will be straighter than using a knife. For brushed metal vinyls, you have to decide which grain direction you want to install. Here are some photos of vertical and horizontal installations. For my car, I've chosen to go with the horizontal installation. Once you have decided which vinyl to use, open the roll and start placing the templates on it for cutting. The Model 3 has three main sections in the center console. The first is the cup holder area, then the middle door, and finally the front phone cover. At first I was going to just measure the console sections in the car in order to size the vinyl pieces. However, somebody was kind enough to post templates for the three sections online. I'll include them in the link down below. I used the PDF version and printed at the original size on a printer. Then I cut them out to use on the vinyl. I used a little bit extra on the sides because I want to tuck it in, so a little bit extra doesn't hurt. You can always trim it later. Since not all of the templates have 90 degree angles, you need to align them with the brush direction so the install isn't crooked. I'm aligning them to one side for less cutting and using the leftovers on the right side for doing the door button area I mentioned earlier. I should still have quite a bit of the 5 foot roll left over in case I make any mistakes. Additionally, it's a good idea to line up the templates from top to bottom in the order and the installation in case there are any differences in the grain. I'm using blue painters tape to attach the templates to the vinyl for cutting. Some cuts will be with the knife and some with the rotary cutter. I'm going to speed up this part of the video. I'll see you at the next step.
The next step, I have to cut out the inside of the cup holder area. This part is a little tricky because you have to freehand with the utility knife. But if you're careful and stay along the lines, you'll do a good job. Now that I have all the vinyl pieces cut, we're on to the installation step. All right, ready to get started. Got a couple tools. Here is the pry tool which is good for pushing in the vinyl around the edges. Utility knife. And a squeegee with a felt edge. Also, this highly fashionable hair dryer. This is used for heating up for the uh, edges and corners for better adhesion. And we're also going to wipe this down, try to get all the dust, fingerprints, best we can. All right. First section we're going to be doing is the upper door. And we're going to be bending it around the lip. I made two little cuts in the corners so I can fold the edges.
Now that all three pieces are installed, I went with the blow dryer, heated up all the edges, tucked in under the trim, and just made sure everything was smooth without bubbles, made sure the edges were flat. The last thing I need to do in the cup holder section is to trim away the excess vinyl. And you can see that I just put the razor blade in between the silver area and the upper area and just go all along that line. Here's some things I learned doing this for the first time. I found out with the car's AC on, the vinyl became rigid. That's why if you notice in the video, I had to use the blow dryer a lot to help it become uh, more malleable. If creases develop, pull out that section a little bit and heat with the blow dryer and the wrinkles disappear. If you do get a bubble, heat it and pressing down usually gets rid of it. And if you get creases, you need to pull back a little bit and try again. Sometimes I had better luck with the squeegee and other times with my finger. Technically, the cup holder section was the most difficult to align correctly. The top section was the next difficult due to the hinge under the screen and the middle door was the easiest. I had the vinyl extend a little bit so I can wrap around the edges. You can pull on the trim pieces and tuck the vinyl underneath. The included pry bar is sometimes a little too thick and I also used a thin gift card. I'm sure the next time I do it, it'll go much faster since it takes a little bit of a learning curve when applying the vinyl. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this a 3 since it can be a little tricky getting the vinyl to apply correctly. And as far as cost goes, I used half of a $5 vinyl sheet. So it was very minimal. Here's the finished uh, install in daylight. Came out pretty good, considering it was my first time uh, working on vinyl. Thanks for watching.